Hi, I'm Mike, and this is Mike's Road Trip. Get off the road! All right. Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Mihaela from World Travel Bound. We are in Vicksburg, Mississippi, where the rich history and southern charm collide. Vicksburg is actually located on a bluff overlooking the mighty Mississippi River, with plenty of museums and restaurants to peruse. Yeah, on top of that, there are six blue trail markers yeah. here in the city, and Highway 61, which I found out is called the Blues Highway, yeah. uh, passes through Vicksburg. That's right, yeah. yeah, yeah. So come along with us and, and let, let us show you around. Downtown Vicksburg is small and walkable, full of charm and intrigue. We discovered that if you scan this QR code, it provides information on some of the top attractions in town. Washington Street is the main boulevard where you'll find many restaurants and shops. So this historic downtown is really charming, isn't it? Yeah, I really like it. I have to say it's small and coquette, yeah. <laughs> as I say all the time. <laughs> Boy, and that uh, lunch we had over a relish was Oh yeah, delicious. that was good, that was yeah. so good. A block or so down the hill toward the river, you'll find the Catfish Row Art and Water Park, a great place to bring the kids. At the northern end of downtown is a local institution, a great place for lunch or dinner. All right, we are digging in into the deep south food which apparently is deep fried. <laughs> Luckily, there's a lot of seafood here. I don't know if you can tell, but this is seafood. <laughs> um, what do we have? We have crab cake, we have shrimp, a grouper. Um, I think we have some scallops here. I don't know what this is. Let me see. Something good. I don't know what it is. And Right here, we have what has become one, become one of my favorite things, coconut shrimp, fried coconut shrimp. And yes, I'm here enjoying it as well. <laughs> if you spend more than a couple of days in Vicksburg, you'll likely see one of these beautiful river boats come ashore. fascinating place and I'm going to share with you some of the things that I know about the park. So throughout the park you will see huge monuments like this one. This is the Illinois State Monument and each of the states who had uh, a stake in the war would donate a memorial here for the park and so Illinois uh, donated this and there's also a lot of symbolism here at the park. For example, you know how many steps are here? 51, I would no. think. No, 47. Ah. There's 47 steps here because that symbolizes each day of the oh. Vicksburg siege. I was thinking of the 51 states. Right, right. there's only 50 states. 50 states. <laughs> batteries which allow federal artillerymen to constantly bombard the nine major so what you just heard there is actually an audio tour guide of the park. We have here a map of the park and then um, you can call this number and for every stop the stops are numbered and for every stop you can hear the tour guide which makes it more in a way lively because they put interactive. all the interactive yeah they put all the the gun sound and stuff like that and you know to hear the explanation it's it's a different uh, experience you know to to visit the park so it's a great way to do it So are you familiar with Ulysses S. Grant? 
I've heard the name, yes. Was yeah. he a president or he something? He was, in fact, a president of the United States. Uh, I think it was around 1869 he became a president. Prior to that, he was a general uh -huh. and served in during the Civil War. He actually stood on these very steps and gave his acceptance speech when he won the Battle of Vicksburg. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. So this is a very historic place. This is the old courthouse. It's now a museum. It's a, uh, we're gonna go inside, but I just thought I would give you a little tidbit on uh, the historic significance of this building, which is really an iconic yeah. symbol of Vicksburg. Yeah, now what, that you told me the story, yeah. I yeah. And it's a very impressive building. It really is. Say, yeah. This is a beautiful museum building. Let's go learn a little bit about the Mississippi River. What do you think? Oh, I was going to ask you. Oh, it says Lower, Lower <laughs> Mississippi River Museum. I was going to ask you what's the name of the museum. Yeah, let's go and check it out. so excited about the engine room but I think this is pretty cool don't you guys don't you prefer the mar martini room wow I mean this is a huge area for these engines exactly. it's very impressive I mean you're right all of the engineering that goes into this is extraordinary. Oh, this is probably where the mechanic, uh, the tool Catfish are so revered in these parts that they actually have a museum dedicated <laughs> to it. Let's go in and have a look. I'll be curious, yeah, what a museum catfish museum yeah. would have inside. So apparently the catfish museum has nothing to do with catfish, <laughs> but rather it's a reference to uh, Catfish Row, which has something to do with something. I'm not sure. If you know about Catfish Row, leave a comment below. Uh, but that's actually right now they're having a, uh, an exhibit on uh, the Women's History Month. And uh, so it's a beautifully rehabbed building um, and they're going to have special events and stuff like that in there at some point. Yeah. So. And we found there a little bit about uh, Madam C.J. Walker. That's right. And yeah. we had recently watched a seri series on Netflix about her about her i don't yeah. remember the name of the series but i it think was it might have been cj walker i'm not sure yeah, yeah it was very short uh, series but we both really enjoyed mm -hmm. it and i was like huh oh, that sounds familiar yeah yeah if you get a it's chance to here. watch that series if in fact it's called cj walker um definitely watch it it's really very uh interesting So I know how much you like these antebellum homes and Vicksburg certainly has uh, a few of them to 
peruse. Many of them are uh, bed and breakfast. Oh, oh. Yeah. How nice. I know. But uh, let's see if we can take a tour of one. Okay, yeah. What's the name of this one? This one is the Duff Green okay. Bed and Breakfast. It looks very nice, like there is lace around yeah. it. Very yeah. Very beautiful. I know. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's go have a look. Try. Yeah. Many of the antebellum home tours in Vicksburg are guided, while others are self-guided. Anchuca was the first antebellum home in Vicksburg to open up for tours. And while it's a bed and breakfast, the home is set up for self-guided tours, and they also have a fantastic on-site restaurant open to the public. Do you like my home? Oh, in my dream. Yeah. These houses are so beautiful, elegant. I just feel like I stepped back in time. People were much more elegant, weren't they, in the past? Like the way they dressed, in their manners, the way they talked, everything. And you can see everything in the house is the same. It's just style. I have to stay in one of these rooms. We should stay here one night. Uh, we have a very famous uh, TV icon in Mississippi named Walt Grayson who came here years ago to do a documentary of a house like he does in many famous places. And when he left, he called this the most haunted house in Mississippi. Oh. <laughs> the Travel Channel agrees with him. They say we're the third most haunted in the country. And another claim to fame is, in the 1960s, National Geographic came to town to do an article on Vicksburg, the 100th anniversary of the siege. And they called McRaven the time capsule of the South. McRaven was part of the article, you see. And the reason they called it that, it was actually built in three different time periods. Uh -huh. 1849, right here, through the door, was built in 1836, and the very back part was built in 1797. George Washington was still president until March of that year. Put some context to it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, they called it the time capsule because as each new owner added onto the house, they left the previous part just like it was. Hmm. No renovations, ever. This house and other antebellum homes here in town survived because the owners let the Confederate officers use the place as an office and also a field hospital. Right. And Mr. Bob had 11 acres here filled with rose gardens. He was too old to fight in the war and horticulture was his hobby. Hmm. But he let the Confederate soldiers camp out on the property as well. So that, that's why it's still here. Yeah. Unfortunately for them, they, he and his wife had to spend all 47 days of the siege in the root cellar under the house. Oh. Basically a dirt cave. <laughs> in 1833, she married the first sheriff of Vicksburg, Stephen Howard, when she was just 12 years old. Well, 12 to 16 was the going age for getting married back then. And he was 28. I don't know if that was normal. Like really old. Wow. But that, apparently they did love each other. Three years later, Sheriff Howard bought this property and added on to the old part back there, mm. the bedroom and dining room below us. Unfortunately, Mary Elizabeth didn't live here very long. In August of 1836, she died on this bed right here. I've, I've seen it go for a full week. Never Whoa, that is freaky. Yes. <sighs> <laughs> oh, there's that guy again. Oh my god. <laughs> it's scary. Oh my gosh, was that a cool tour or what? I, I really, really enjoyed it and then he was telling stories, the, the guide was telling stories. Steven. Steven. Yeah. He was telling stories so nicely. Um, and at the beginning, this is a haunted house, so I thought, oh, okay, I don't really believe in this. And now I still, my, my stomach is like very, very tiny. And I thought it's, it's not gonna get to me, it's not gonna get because I don't believe in this, but I have to tell you like the vibe yeah. is there, very strange. 
This is a very fascinating place. During the war, um, there were a lot of Union soldiers here uh, that occupied the property, and there are lots of dead people buried here. I think they said between 300 and 600, they estimate. And of course, there were many people who've died in the home. Yeah, almost in every room that he was showing us, he was saying that somebody was died, has died there. Yeah. And this home dates back to the late uh, 1700s, although there have been a number of additions over the years, but it's a very old, old home and it's absolutely all authentic, which is very unusual here in Vicksburg and probably throughout the country. Yeah. Because they, they have uh, left the way it is uh, without getting to code. Uh, or if they wanted to make it into a bed and breakfast, for example, they would have to um, get up to code. So everything is authentic in the house and the amount of uh, artifacts and antiques is remarkable. Yeah. yeah, highly recommend coming here if you get a chance. Yeah. Um, how about that uh, Mary Elizabeth cabinet? Did you yeah. get scared? Uh, that was a little freaky, yeah. I actually, um, Stephen had said, oh, did you see the door open up? And I'm um, like, no. I actually thought that the floor was moving yeah. and stuff like that. And But it was interesting because it was opening, closing. Well, but yeah, so actually I turned the camera on and I was just filming Stephen talking and all of a sudden the door goes shut. And we're like, whoa. And then he said, oh, you'll see, sometimes it happens that she opens it completely. And they were talking, was, he was filming Steven, and then I, I saw it opening slowly. I'm like, it's opening yeah. again. So we're like, oh, let's get out of here now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, I think we should just get out of here all together. I know, okay, let's go. bye bye, Mary Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> think about this place. <laughs> Looks crazy now, it's very colorful. But let's see, they have boiled peanuts. So the last time I was in Vicksburg, I really wanted to come here to the tomato place, but I think it was closed or something. And so we're here now, and it, it is a very strange place. It gets super high reviews. It's right off the freeway, as you can hear, or the highway. And when he says right off, it's if you make one it's right. step, it's the yeah. freeway. It's yeah. not like a belt or anything, really. It's yeah. just crazy. And I'm laughing right now when, when he's telling that because this place is crazy. It's, it looks crazy. You know the perfect word? Eclectic. Yeah. This place is very eclectic and it, it's just like a roadside stand, but it is cool. And so right now we're waiting for our order. We got um, a BLT with avocado with on pumpernickel and they bake the bread here. We got, uh, what was it? The Jamaican burger. It's got yams and stuff on it. And what is BLT though? Bacon, lettuce, and tomato. Oh I my gosh, no she wanted I, to order the BLT and didn't even know what it was. Because it said, it said it's their typical sandwich, so I don't care what it is, I'll yeah. eat it. I just want to try everything, really, the typical stuff. And we so. got a, uh, a smoothie, a fresh yeah, berry smoothie, frozen, yeah. frozen smoothie. And then also we got what's oh, something she has been wanting finally. for the longest time, boiled peanuts, which I've never had either. We call those, if they're the long ones, like double thing, we call those in Romania, we call them earth peanuts. Everything else uh. is peanuts and they are called earth peanuts. Oh. And we were talking about this, this morning it was so hot and we saw somebody drinking and we thought, oh my God, I, I drink it maximum once a year or yeah. once every yeah. two years, really. Yeah. But when it's really, really hot, a really, really cold sip of coal, Mm. In a bottle is nice. Too. It's just what the doctor recommended. And <laughs> in a classic bottle, it kind of tastes different, no? It brings me back in time. Yeah, it's good. Almost. So what do you think of your first BLT? <laughs> I think it said it's a lot of tomatoes. <laughs> it's my favorite vegetable or some call it fruit. And I think it goes to show because we are in the tomato place. <laughs> Lots of them, but they're pretty good. Hi, I am H.C. Porter. 
Welcome to the H.C. Porter Gallery. And I am in the heart of historic downtown Vicksburg, Mississippi. I am a Mississippi native and have been a Mississippi practicing artist since 1987. My work starts as my photograph. It's well known for documenting Mississippi's culture and heritage. More recently, I created a, a traveling exhibition of 31 of Mississippi's living blues artists. And that toured, but each piece was paired with oral history, so you had an audio. You could hear what that, how that blues artist came to be, what their relationship, you know, they grew up in Mississippi, what their relationship with Mississippi is um, as they are living. They're my original photographs. People say, why don't you have Muddy Waters? He's from Mississippi. Well, he's dead and gone. So I have to be able to interact with them, record their oral histories. Uh, this is Jesse Robinson. He's one of my 31 blues artists, living legends. Actually, when B.B. King passed away, Jesse took over B.B.'s band and started traveling with uh, his band. This was in Peach's Restaurant. It's a downtown sort of historic black business district in Jackson. And Peaches is now passed on, but her son Roderick still runs it, and Jesse would play in the corner. Uh, Vicksburg rooftops, this gives you a real sense of what Vicksburg's like too, because it's kind of got the hills, you don't really expect it, most of Mississippi's kind of flat, uh, and it's also very colorful. So this is right on the River Bluff. And I do have prints and everything available at hcporter.com. Oh my God. We just tried this and we have to have them. Apparently it's the only chip designed exclusively for wine and we have a really good wine waiting for us. Of course, you can't visit Vicksburg without listening to some blues. I'm so glad, so glad. Well, if you're into history and southern charm. And let's not forget about the blues. That's right. You gotta come to Vicksburg. So until next time, we'll, we'll see, see you on the road. road. Backroadtrip.com